The UK's second smallest city is a true hidden gem of North Wales. Welcome to Sintasa. Our tour begins at the city service station immediately off the A55 expressway. Its superstore has recently gotten a revamp, including an integrated subway and Starbucks. Across the road is a Wednesday store, a Welsh chain selling agricultural products and a used car dealership. Further down the road lies Elwy Crescent, opposite of which is The Plough, one of the most prominent pubs and restaurants in Sintasa. Follow the side road towards the city library, which had a makeover back in 2018. In this part of town you have the fire station, the cricket club and of course the library which doubles as a one-stop shop for accessing council services and tourist information. Beyond this is a footpath leading to the riverside walks along the common. St Asaf Cricket Club was formed in 1862 and was a founding member of the North Wales Cricket League in 1972. Its clubhouse boasts facilities that allow it to double as a prominent community centre as well as a pavilion for the cricket grounds. The plough provides generous parking space for customers at no extra cost, although there is public free parking behind the library. Behind this suburb you lie some lovely footpaths running parallel with the River Elwy, which is the main river flowing through the city, splitting it in half. This river is even part of St Asaf's Welsh name, Llan Elwy, meaning parish church on the River Elwy. The English name St Asaf, on the other hand, was the name of the cathedral's second bishop, who was left in charge when the founder, St Kentigird, returned to Scotland. The footbridge we are crossing is known as Pont de Gart, named after the French town that St Asaf is twinned with. This bridge leads to the common, the main riverside park boasting stunning views of the cityscape as you will see later, where there are footpaths leading towards the city centre to the right, to the left lies a wall hosting what is known as the Snake of Hope. This is a recent community project consisting of a trail of stones painted by residents of the city during the 2020 lockdowns through the COVID-19 pandemic, leading to a lovely display of creativity for riverside walkers to enjoy. Despite having the smallest medieval cathedral in the UK, the modest tower still forms a prominent feature of the city's skyline thanks to being on top of a hill, with a nice array of buildings forming around it. St Asaf has historically been recognised as a city by virtue of its cathedral, with the old diocese dating back to 560 AD. However, it was unable to confirm its city status with the Queen in 1974 due to its old city charters being lost. But this changed when it had its city status restored in 2012 during the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. On this part of the common, one path leads around the bowling green towards H.M. Stanley Memorial at the bottom of the High Street, while another continues under the Elwy Bridge heading towards Row Class, where St Asaf City FC Stadium is located just before the City Council meeting rooms. The Elwy Bridge is a stone bridge over the namesake river, carrying the main road leading into the city centre. The present structure was built in 1770, replacing an earlier wooden structure that was easily susceptible to floods. The arches were made 65 metres wide to ensure the river had plenty of space to flow through. Over here is the city's football stadium for St Asaf City FC, and there appears to be a match going on right now. It's recently got a new upgrade. So we got a proper stadium stand and everything. Over there is the city council meeting rooms. The main council rooms were built on the footprint of an old tennis pavilion, which previously burnt down. Being a third of the size of St David's City Hall, this is officially the smallest city council building in Britain, although this is just enough to house facilities for regular council meetings and even be booked as an events venue through the city council website, with free parking provided right outside. The city council also meets in other venues of the city, such as the Cricket Club, Library and Isgall Glan Cloyd. At this point of the high street you get an assortment of memorials around a well-crafted stone bus shelter. As well as the War Memorial Cross you get the Mary Short Fountain and the H.M. Stanley Memorial. Mary Short was the wife of one of the former bishops of St Asaf Cathedral. She had this fountain erected at Bronwilver Square near the cathedral with its distinct stone facade in order to provide easier access to running water for poorer residents living on top of the hill, saving them from having to carry water uphill from the stream below. It was later relocated to its current place at the bottom of the hill when it became redundant as water companies provided pipes to serve that purpose instead. 
Apparently water no longer flows from here, but it remains a historic monument nonetheless. At the junction to Lower Street lies the H.M. Stanley Memorial, a distinct obelisk commemorating the life of Henry Morton Stanley, a prominent traveller who spent his childhood at the old workhouse at the southern end of the city. And over here is the parish church. As if a cathedral wasn't enough, St Asaph is also home to an additional six churches, including this one, which is the secondary Anglican church after the cathedral. While this is rather impressive for a place of its size, two of them are no longer in use. A chapel not pictured here, which is currently being converted into flats, and the Methodist church, which has now been sold. So, taking a little detour from the main road, there are some hidden gems in the city. So, you've got the Earthworks Pottery over here. And uh, just uh, down the road is the uh, Myrtle House Gift Gallery. Well, let's have a look inside. The Earthworks Pottery is an established ceramic shop dating back to 1987, located within this 17th century building, where you can browse and buy a range of locally handcrafted pottery with a variety of designs. The store owner, Wendy Gill, throws and paints the majority of these products herself. Now I'll hand you over to her to explain the most intriguing part of a shop. Right, so every pin on this map has been someone who came in from the particular country taking a pot home with them. So every pin represents a pot around the world. Oh wow, that's amazing. This for years. Just look at how many far-flung corners of the globe her artwork has ended up in. They're literally spread out across all seven continents, except Antarctica of course. This exhibit alone makes the Earthworks Pottery well worth the visit. So fun fact, this building was around since uh, the 1600s. Apparently uh, in a map in 1632, this building was still there. And uh, the fact that it's still intact right now in its uh, original form is uh, pretty amazing in itself. So now let's uh, have a look at Myrtle House Gift Gallery. This is a rather nice building. Oh, you can enter here. Oh, I love this floral display. Rather pleasant entry. Let's have a look. As you enter, you are greeted with a fine display of paintings and other artwork, all of which can be purchased for those interested. Oh, I quite like this one. The main part of the shop is in the other room to the left, where you get an amazing selection of gift items as well as more arts and crafts on display. Myrtle House Gift Gallery is a relatively recent addition to St. Asa. It has been running for about three to four years at the time of filming and hopefully much more years to come. Anyone is free to supply their own artwork to be displayed and sold here with 70% commission for each sale made. Both of these shops in Lower Street form a nice little art corner tucked away from the hustle and bustle of the High Street, each with very friendly owners who are more than happy to have a chat and are very helpful in providing information about not just their shops, but also about the city and its local history. If anywhere in St. Asaph is worth visiting besides the cathedral, this is it, being a stone's throw away from the parish church and H.M. Stanley Memorial. So the parish church was built in the 13th century, but restored extensively in 1872, and much more recently, it has just had major renovations, allowing it to double as a community centre and youth club, as well as the usual church stuff. This place is the burial site of Dick Abadaran, a Welsh polyglot born in 1780, who, despite having no formal education to his name, was known to have taught himself around 15 different languages, including Latin at the age of 11. He even compiled a Welsh-Greek-Hebrew dictionary in 1832, which is now kept at the cathedral up the hill. As we return to the high street, you see City Glam, an established beauty salon. To the left is an uphill climb through the main part of the high street, leading to the cathedral. To the right are Bill and Ben's DIY, and the fittingly named Flower Pot Cafe next door. These were previously the stables for the Bishop's Palace, but now they are city centre apartments. While the railway serving St Asaph is long gone, Arriva run regular bus services through the city on a half hourly basis between Rill and Denby, although this was previously every 20 minutes before Covid. Now for some cake and hot chocolate from the Flower Pot Cafe. All the seating areas are full so I'll head off to the common. So I picked a nice spot in the common by the River Elwy. Got my cake and coffee. So as you can see I got raspberry and white chocolate cake. Quite a nice looking cake if you ask me. Got some hot chocolate to wash it down with, so time to tuck in. Oh, I should have gotten a spoon. Mmm. Wow. Freshly baked by the 
the feel of it. Mmm. Got some of the hot chocolate. Mmm. That is so refreshing. Okay, that cake was incredible. I'm giving it a solid 9.5 out of 10. After that refreshing snack, it's time to head down to Lower Denby Road. This co-op is the only full-size supermarket in the city. The concourse provides space for community activities like regular charity sales and the distribution of the City Times, a local monthly newspaper. It would be interesting to know who bought the Methodist Church, but there's some nice shops around it. Blind shop there, but it's closed by the looks of it. Here's another amazing shop just down the road from co-op that I highly recommend. Foxen's Tackle Fishing Shop has just celebrated its 50th anniversary. So let's have a look. This store was initially a family-run newsagents and post office, but in 1967, at just 16 years of age, Arthur Foxen started selling fishing equipment here. Much to the surprise of his parents, this was so successful that it eventually became the main focus of the shop, shifting away from its original purpose. Arthur is now retired, but his daughter Renee inherited his comprehensive knowledge of fishing. Now you'll find an extensive range of fishing gear, and reviews say it's one of the best fishing shops in North Wales. Thanks to the city being spread out across a hill, we get all sorts of different angles, and this is a rather interesting building. Oh, a nice little square down there, that's cool. And right next to the Flower Pot Cafe is Bill and Ben's DIY. I've heard it, very good things about this store, but unfortunately it's closed right now. So let's head up the high street. The Bengal Village is an exquisite tandoori restaurant and takeaway. Next door is a well-known pub called the Kentigan Arms, named after the founding saint of the diocese. Further up the road, you'll find a Chinese restaurant and a conservative club. Mandarin Kitchen actually has some great reviews, with the most notable comment being the generous portion sizes served. So this is the old HSBC bags. It was uh, once a gallery, but that's uh, closed a while ago. And then there's the Barclays Bank. This is the now Antonius Flowers and Gifts, a relatively new shop. So I definitely need to check that one out. It's a rather steep hill climb. And now to check out this shop. Antonius Flowers and Gifts sells a range of gift items for various occasions, with their main specialty being flower arrangements and bouquets. There have been many positive reviews, notably how long-lasting the flowers are. That was a nice browse. Great way to use an old bank building. There's also a kebab shop there. Next door to the kebab shop lies a picture framing shop and the city news agents. Across the road next to Antonio's is the Baptist Church. Distressed because the bank's closed. Well, pack up your troubles, cars. This place is made with ice cream. Oh, it's closed as well. That's awkward. This was once the house of George and Felix Powell, two brothers who were famous for composing the wartime classic Pack Up Your Troubles in 1915. But more recently it was repurposed to an ice cream parlour affectionately named Made With Ice Cream. However, it was closed at the time of filming, which is disappointing as I was looking forward to having some good quality ice cream from here. Next door lies the old Nat West building, which was the last bank to close in St Asaph. The building was initially a hotel known as the Moston Arms, before being repurposed into a post office and a grocer's, as well as a community centre before housing the Nat West Bank. However, this was its last commercial use before it was sadly reduced to a private residence. Huge missed opportunity to convert it into a tourist information centre. This building looks perfect for it. The farm shop has served as a sandwich shop and delicatessen on the high street, but it has been a victim of the pandemic as it is currently for sale. It has its own history of shops through years gone by. Hopefully whoever buys it will maintain commercial use and open another cafe or bakery. Passing the old rectory, we approach the top of the hill where you'll find the main crown jewel behind St Asaph's historic importance, the cathedral itself. In front lies the Translator's Memorial, a monument to commemorate the translation of the Bible into the Welsh language.
The cathedral crossroads at the top of town have two very prominent buildings on either side. Jacob's Ladder to the left is a hugely popular cafe for city centre dining, rumoured to have the best cakes in the city, and Bryn Dinas to the right, which is a sizeable pub. Next to Jacob's Ladder lies the Chippery, a high quality fish and chip shop. Behind is the entrance to Kentigan House in the Old Cannonry. Down Ron Wilbur Square is another Methodist church. And beyond the cathedral is Upper Denby Road leading to Tweedmill Shopping Outlet and the market towns of Denby and Rithen. Down Chester Street you have more shops and whatnot. A nice little lunch box here. I think it's closed. This butcher's shop has run for about 40 years. The old courthouse has had a varied history over the past century and a half, initially built in the 1850s to house the county courts, which later relocated to other towns like Mould and Ruthen. This building has been repurposed multiple times to house a textile factory, a youth club which has been very prominent throughout the late 20th century, a hat shop and its current use as a hair salon. Over here is the old railway station. This was a major stop on the now disused Vale of Cloyd Railway between Rill and Denby. It closed to passenger services in 1955, with the line completely shut 10 years later. The old station building is still intact and currently used as offices for a stained glass company. Next to this is the former coal shed for the station, which has since been converted into a furniture store run by R.N. Williams, an established long-running business within the city. As the store just closed by the time I arrived, I wasn't able to see what it's like, but according to a Google Maps review, it offers better quality than the likes of B&Q. Heading back along Chester Street, you can see the Roman Catholic Church, which initially served an Irish community living adjacent. This was the site of an old slum dubbed Irish Square, where said community lived. It was demolished in 1934 to make way for this building, which used to serve as the City Hall, housing numerous council offices for 40 years. However, it fell out of use upon government reorganisation, with most departments relocating to Rill and Prostaton. Now it houses offices for an accounting firm run by Rob Salisbury. The the Dean's Library was built in 1893 to house the cathedral's books to free up space within the cathedral for other purposes, and in 1971, 2,000 of the most valuable books were sent off to the University Library in Aberystwyth. Currently the building houses a fitness club. The cathedral has been destroyed and rebuilt many times throughout medieval history as a consequence of numerous invasions from opposing factions, such as the forces of King Edward I and later Owen Glyndor and his self-proclaimed Welsh Parliament. In the 16th century, William Morgan, a former bishop of the cathedral, written the first ever translation of the Bible into Welsh. This was a major stepping stone in keeping the language alive as it allowed Welshmen to read their scripture in their own language. Copies of the original Welsh Bible are on display inside the cathedral. In more recent times, the cathedral serves as a venue for the North Wales International Music Festival, held every September since 1972. Round the back is the Translator's Tea Room, which is a pleasant little cafe you are truly spoilt for choice when it comes to having a cake and coffee in this city. And just outside the cathedral, we've got some gardening in progress. Looking good so far. St Asaph's Grammar School was built in the 1870s, but was replaced with Isgall Glan Cloyd in 1969, as the original grammar school relocated to Prostaton. Isgall Glan Cloyd was the first ever Welsh medium secondary school in Wales, after bouncing back from English oppression. Initially established in Rill in 1956, before outgrowing its original site, and relocating to this magnificent piece of Victorian architecture here in St Asaph, as Welsh medium education rapidly gained traction. The school had since had many extensions over the years, including Theatre Elwood, in 2005, which is a venue for community meetings and entertainment as well as school events, and the most recent extension being a massive three-storey block in 2017, overall making it the largest Welsh medium school in North Wales. This gives Usgall Glan Cloyd a mix of different architectural styles, representing different eras, from Victorian to Brutalist to Modern. There is also a Welsh language centre for adults in a separate building, cementing this campus's status as a bastion of Welsh language learning. In recent years, there has been a lot of new housing development in the southern end of St Asaph, around the former site of H.M. Stanley Hospital, including a brand new hospice. H.M. Stanley Hospital was initially a Victorian workhouse where Henry Morton Stanley grew up. This then served as the city's hospital throughout the 20th century, being the birthplace of Greg Davies, a comedian most known for his role as Mr. Gilbert from The Inbetweeners. However, given a much larger hospital is just two junctions away on the A55, this hospital fell out of use in 2011 and has since been repurposed into flats. And that concludes our tour of St Asaph in North Wales, a truly unique city which thrives on quality over quantity. 
thanks for watching.